Welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Oravillians. And this is number 10. Whoa. <laughs> with B again with us. It's, it's such an honor to have him. I'm uh, so B, happy to be here, yes. <laughs> we, uh, I knew Vincenzo from the first days, and he and I would travel to Chennai to get parts and all kinds of things. And he would eat at any dirty roadside cafe. And he said, well, I have a particular philosophy. I said, well, what is that, Vincenzo? He said, I'll eat and I'll get sick and then I won't get sick anymore. Oh. <laughs> and, and so he could eat any place and never get sick after that. Wow. But he was, uh, he was a unique uh, pioneer. Yes, for sure. And, uh, you remember and, him? Oh, very well, well huh? very well. Well, because in in these last year, you know, he came back to Oroville, and of course, his daughter Oro Taranti. I remember her in the very first days of Portus, there with her mother Claire, mm. and uh, Taranti would always be sitting on the counter. You know, just this little girl sitting on this cute little girl with her blonde curls. And we would be getting our veggies, and she was always making comments and entertaining everybody. Hmm. It was so wonderful. And then, is this uh, the Claire that? Portuguese Claire. Uh, Amer American Claire. Took care of the birds. No, no. you're you're thinking of. Uh, Dietra. Yes, exactly. This that's, is another Claire. That's another Claire. Okay. We we can talk about Dietra also, but this Claire. Um, it, it was Claire still in Oroville. She is, uh, oh. but uh, an unfortunate thing, we talked about the visas. Her partner now, uh, Richard, had some visa trouble and, and then it got even worse. And they, lo I don't know if they lost his papers and this and that. He could not get back into Oroville. So uh, they have a house now, as I understand, in Thailand. So he's living in Thailand, she is living here. Uh, and so they, uh, you know, he, he can't come to India, so she goes to Thailand. And uh, Claire has some other very interesting uh, projects to try to help Oroville through the internet and all that. But at that time she was doing the Portus. But Vincenzo, um, you know, in the early years when Mother wanted to start Oroville, she sent him out to Promess to build some things. And uh, he was a mechanic and a builder. But then when the inauguration came, she wanted somebody to make that urn. And so she drew a sketch on the paper, you know, that urn, that lotus bud shape. Mm -hmm. She just made a sketch and she told him how big. And so she called him and she said, oh, you make this. And, but then he was protesting, you know, he said to the mother, no, you know, mother, I'm a mechanic, but I'm not an artist. I can't do that. And she said, but you're an Italian. All Italians are artists. And you start tomorrow. Because it was the first week of February and he only had three weeks to make that thing. So he got to the end of it and he had to stay up all night because he, he got all those little marble chips. If you've seen that urn, you know, it's got oh, these yes. So he had to put them all in by hand. So he's working all night, last three nights working. And, and he was there in Coco Garden in Pondi, and he's smoking like anything and drinking coffee, you know, to stay awake and to be charged up. And then all those ashramites, they sent messages to the mother uh, saying, this man is smoking, this man is drinking coffee in the ashram premise. The mother wrote back a big note and this is what I heard, I don't know if it's, you know, we don't know what, what really happened, but this is what they said. Mother wrote back a big note in big letters, please leave that man alone, he has important work to do. <laughs> Something like that. So then, there was the urn. So then Vincenzo went back to France because he wanted to get more tools and things to build Oroville. And so he came back with another caravan. He did two, a couple of those, two or three caravans, mm. bringing all those people, those early pioneers, you know, many of them, Christine, you know, and all those people oh, came yes. with him. Then he wanted to go back and he talked to the mother. He said, I have to go back again. I have to get more stuff and we're going to build a city. We don't have enough, we have, you know, we don't have enough. So he goes back again and then he got 
some ideas that he could do, I don't know, some projects or something and make a lot of money. And then he would make that money, and then we use that money to build Oregon. So he worked on those for many years, and none of those projects really worked out. So, but then he wanted to come back to Oroville. Now this is just a few years ago, so maybe I don't oh. know, eight years ago or something, oh. six or eight. He wanted to come back to Oroville, so he sends in, you know, he contact. I'm, you know, returning Oroville, and I don't want to come. He said, No, no, no. You've been out longer than you lived here. Yes. You can't be a returning Oroville. Uh, I got the same message. <laughs> <laughs> So the poor fellow, you know, it broke his heart. You know, I mean, talk about being an Orvillian, he made the urn, you know, I mean, oh. and he built the first building so Orville could start. So, I mean, it was, it shattered him. But still he came because his daughter was there. And his daughter, you know, and he had grandchildren now. He has, uh, I think, one or two oh. grandchildren. So he, he came back again and he went again personally to them. And, and he got the same answer. And then he said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving Orville. I'm not coming back here. Uh, I, I can't take this, it's too much. So he goes. Then some of his friends say, this is ridiculous, Vincenzo. You're, you're part of Oroville, you want to be here. You can't let a few people who don't understand the situation stop you. So they went to the entry service. And they, you know, prevailed on the entry service and said, these letters and things you wrote to him is all incorrect. And they put a lot of pressure on the entry service. The entry service then wrote a letter and said, Vincenzo, you're welcome. Please come back. You can join Orville. So he did. So he came back, and he came back. And but he was here a very short time when he had a little accident with his uh, moped, and he had this scrape on his leg, and this leg got infected. So that infection started getting really bad, turning septic. So and and then he was here in the in the clinic or in the Orville Health Center. And they said, no, this is serious, you know, this can kill you. Oh. And uh, so, uh, but, so they said, you've got to go to Chennai, you know, to Apollo or one of the big hospitals there, and they have to operate and do this stuff. So, but he was getting really bad, so they got an ambulance. They had to take him in an ambulance. So they put him in the ambulance, they, they start going to Chennai. The ambulance runs out of gas. So... <laughs> He's lying in the ambulance. They go back to Vincenzo and they say, look, we're sorry, there's a big delay. You know, we'll have to go get petrol and all this. And Vincenzo started laughing. He said, you know, you're on the way to the hospital to die and the ambulance runs out of gas. And he was laughing. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but still nobody, you know, thought it was quite that critical. So he was, a couple of people were with him. So they got the petrol, you know, they were a day late or something. They got there with the ambulance, and then they got him into his room, and uh, he was settling into his room, and he was he was resting, and and the two people there said, uh, you know, we'll we'll go out and get some food, you know, we'll go get some food and bring back, and so we'll 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 step out for a little bit. So they went out to get the food. They came back. He was dead. Yeah, he was dead. Just in that few minutes, he, you know, that sepsis. And got him. So yeah. that uh, yeah. Vincenzo. Uh, Dynamic man. Yeah. Dynamic worker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had those wonderful things. Remember him yeah. well. Yeah. So, so many of these pioneers, many of them, many of them went to heaven very, very quickly. What to say? Barbara had a similar story. Barbara Rood's wife, Barbara, uh, yes. mother, mother of Akash. Oh yes. She was so wonderful. Totally dedicated to Matramandir. Spent years in that office. Knew oh. almost every donor <coughs> by name and by heart. And yes. people came to see her. She wrote personal messages to thousands of people. Yes. She spent her whole day there. She worked like anything. And then uh, she got sick also. She had this kind of, uh, it was this uh, sort of intestinal cancer sort of thing. And, uh, and then it got bad and she went to the hospital. So they were supposed to, I think they were going to do a little operation or something. So she was there in intensive care. And uh, John was, was going there to see her. Uh, but then she got a little worse and she needed the oxygen. 
So they had her in the oxygen tent, and she needed it to breathe, the oxygen. <clears throat> so then what happened? The, they had a power failure in the hospital, oh my God. and the oxygen went off. And uh, they have, uh, of course, they got to have, <laughs> for the emergency, they have a backup, sure. you know. But there was some time getting the generator going, like five minutes or something. And in that five minutes, without the oxygen, she died. And, and John was there. And John said, oh, just like Barbara, take that chance <laughs> to go out when she could. Because she didn't like, she didn't like her situation, you know. Yeah. Uh, she, she was a worker. Yes. She, di she didn't yes. want to be, you know, being taken care of and all of that. And There's another lady who passed away, Dee. Yeah. You remember D? Of course, Bhavana. Bhavana. Yeah. Bhavana. And he changed her name. Yeah. Yeah. D de Q. Yeah. D de Q. And, and she uh, did a lot for the uh, Tamil people. She did for Village Action. And, yes. you know, and Ambu and Morris, the two social workers that are still running the Village Action, she recruited them, you know, a young couple. And now they're, you know, grown up in years and, and doing a fantastic job. She, uh, she did great work. We, we started Verite, you know, uh, in the early 80s. And then uh, when the Verite experiment, did I mention how the Verite experiment went down? We, ha we had a wonderful thing there. I, we talked about Cyril starting it yes, and giving did. it the name. And then uh, after a certain point, uh, you know, our whole co-op kind of failed there. But then Bhavana came in a second wave. Uh, and she was there, and Aurelio was there, and they brought it to another level. And then Danya, who was one of the original founders with us, he came back, and now it's in a third phase. But she was there, and she got this throat cancer. And so uh, she tried many things, and uh, it was, uh, it seemed, got to the point where she couldn't, uh, you know, really really breathe well. So we were looking after her and she wanted to be at home. She didn't want to go to the hospital. And uh, so I remember just, uh, it was the day before, yeah, it was on a Friday. I was her caretaker and we had some very good discussions because she and I had had some differences on a couple of things and it was good we could resolve them very nicely because, you know, you don't want to die with any of these things left. <laughs> so we, we resolved them very nicely. And then I was supposed to come back and take care of her on Monday. But on Sunday, she passed away. Mm. And, uh, yeah. And Anandi, I think, was there with her. Uh, well, we've talked about some things that are not macabre at all, but they're, they're honoring original pioneers. Um, so now I'd like to turn the conversation to uh, the young people whom, in whom you see such light and such promise. If you can tell us about a few of the very young people. Well, very young. I mean, I'm, I'm living next door to uh, a little family and they have two very beautiful children. Uh, one little boy, he's just uh, four now. Uh, Udai, and I can see the potential in this little boy, you know, at four years old, I mean, you can just see his skills, you know. He can, he can ride on his little cycle full speed, you know, around bushes and everything, I mean, just physically, you know, he's, <laughs> he's a superior, <laughs> superior being, and so smart and so attentive. And then he has a very beautiful sister, uh, Ayana, who I was very fortunate to be with since she was about three years old because I was a caretaker there with her, her parents. And so her parents were often busy and she would come to me and we had a lot of fun together, you know. She, she, she wanted to make a tree house and her father was an architect so she instructed him how to make that tree house even though he was an architect. And then we would have a breakfast up there and then she would designate, oh, the fridge would go here. And she would take a couple of leaves and she would stick them on the, on the branch and say, okay, you know, that's where the fridge is. 
and over here we, we have the table. She would do all this, you know, all this in her mind, you know. And how old was she then? There's, well, I started at three, oh. and uh, all the way up <clears throat> until she was about uh, seven or eight, you know, we were, we were doing all this. Now she's 12. So now she's, uh, you know, already what you would call teenage in, in a way. And so she's in another world. So the, the world of childhood is gone. <laughs> But uh, we had so much fun, and we would do these, we used to travel around the world. So I would take uh, her hand and her foot, and then I would swing her around. This was the airplane flight. And then we would go to Rome, and then we would go to San Francisco, and then we would touch down. You know. And then she would say, okay, now we go to the hotel, I will call the taxi. And then she had her imaginary phone, she would call the taxi. And then, okay, we get back on the flight. Okay, when she's swinging around, she would say, now the, uh, you know that the uh, uh, stewardess will come. I think I'll have orange juice this time, you know. Coming out of this little one, you know. It was so, uh, so, so amazing. So these kind of children, you can see, and she goes to this TLC, they call it, the, uh, this learning center. Um, and they have an open kind of free progress system. Mm -hmm. And so she's doing art and, and doing plays and they're doing, and they travel. They, they uh, go to different places in India and do these experiments. So, I mean, th these kids, are, they're going to be phenomenal. And, and, you know, and, you know, I know one or two here and there, but I mean, you know, there's a whole, whole bunch of them. And, uh, and I hear about uh, my partner Nandini, she teaches in the transition school in the third grade, and she tells me about these different children, you know, uh, what they do, yes. and how, how incredibly smart they are, and uh, the things they say. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, it's another, it's another uh, kind of, this is, these are the new children, you know, they talk about all those kind of things now, about the, the new the new race and the special children, but they're there, they're there. Yes. And, uh, I heard one the other night about a boy that I know, and he was in school and behaving very badly. And so his teacher said to him, I'm going to call your father. And he said, call him. And he said, well, I don't have his number. No, he said, well, what's his number? What's his number? And he said, well, I don't know. And he said, let me see your phone. This is a five-year-old child telling an adult that, yeah. you know, let me see your phone to be sure you've got his number on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And another little one, she was three and a half, and we were having lunch with her and her family. And she gets down from her chair, and she said, I've got to pee. Don't eat my dahi. Three and a half. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's amazing. No, we, we, there, there are hundreds of those. Uh, I mean, mm. it happens all the time. I, I just, you know, when you said that, I, I thought I had to think of Shalev, who is the daughter of Aviram and mm. Yorit. And Shalev, when she was, I think she couldn't have been more than four. Maybe she was five. She told me, and this is a couple of years ago, she told me, you have to have WhatsApp. She said, WhatsApp is the latest. And then we, we can talk, you know, and I'm going, I'm going to Africa and things, you know, and then you, you can talk to me. And I said, well, yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't have WhatsApp, I don't know. Well, show, me, show me your phone. And she says, you just download it, and she's working on the phone. You, you get into WhatsApp, and then uh, I'll send you a message, mm -hmm. and uh, you have my phone. So she introduced me to WhatsApp. And, you know, I've been using WhatsApp ever since. <laughs> And this this girl, I, I you know, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, exaggerate, but I don't think she was more than five at that time. Whoa. And now she's now she's about ten. So this was five years ago, or maybe she was six then. But now she's ten, and now she's she's a gymnast, and mm. she can do these double flips and all these things, and she's on YouTube doing these flips, and she's just a phenomenal uh, child, you know, and and her sister. Osher, who was this little kid, you know, that at Sadna Forest on Fridays, you can go out there, 
they have a, a eco film club. They show a film and they they give you uh, a dinner and a little tour of the place. Anybody can go. You know, you don't have to pay or anything. And so this little girl, this is a few years ago, and they still do it, but she used to come, you know, with the bus, the van, and she would be there at the solar kitchen. She would organize the people, you know, and she would be on her phone with, with the place. Okay, we've got so many people today, you know, talking to the kitchen, you know, okay, we, need, we probably need this much food, you know, just organize the whole trip. Oh my God. And then she went to last school, and now she's, you know, now she's an adult. I mean, it's it's unbelievable, you know, these kind of kids. You just <laughs> you just marvel. <laughs> you just marvel when you see them. Yeah. You just marvel. Maybe we could you could just talk for a few minutes about the the media in Oroville, news and notes in Oroville today. Sure. We started Oroville today with Alan and Carl and Roger. Uh, that was a great moment. <laughs> that was thirty. 30 years ago, it was 19, yeah, 30 years ago, yeah, 1988. 30 years, in 1988 we started that and everybody said, oh, you know, this, this, uh, you don't have a chance, that thing won't work, you know. If you get out six issues, you know, that will be something, but it's going to fail. He, Alan, I mean, I just had lunch with him today, never missed in 30 years. They never missed it. I mean, one or two times in one or two years, they, they put out a double issue because, you know, something happened, there was the cyclone or something. But, I mean, incredible. And the high quality of that. Or I worked there for 10 years. I was, oh, really? Yeah, 10 years I helped oh. them. You know, I was one of the editors, and, and uh, we, we had such a good time. And it was such an enriching experience because once a week, we would get together for a full morning, or a full afternoon, and we had to discuss all the issues in Oroville. We had to discuss all the articles. We had to agree, come to a consensus. Can we write this about the economy? Can we write this mm. about the working committee? You know, all these delicate things. Uh, and we would, of course, get into many uh, discussions and, and the conflicts over, no, 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 we can't, oh, yes, we can, we have to say that, that's the oh. truth. You know, this went on. But it was so delightful. And then uh, Bindu came along later, and uh, she joined, and we had such a good group. And, uh, and we always met uh, in people's houses. I was working also at CSR at that time, so we met in CSR. And then we met at people's houses. And uh, eventually we started meeting mostly in Karel's house, because he had that big house, you know, in Samasti. And he had a nice uh, patio there, so we, we, normally we did it there. So that went on for all those years until they got their office in the Surrender Tower. You know, in the community of Surrender, they built this, this tower as a mm. water tank. Mm. But then they thought they would put some, uh, you know, instead of just the pillars, they'd put some offices and rooms in. Mm. Well, nobody wanted to live in this tower. Nobody wanted an office in this tower. <laughs> so, but, so, Orville today took it. They took the, the office up there in this tower so we called it the Surrender Tower. But it, that, that was after 10 years of kind of doing hand to mouth. So then that, that's when I left to do something. And uh, then so then they, and they're still there. So they're still in the tower and they meet there regularly. And uh, so Carl and uh, Alan are still there doing it. And, wow. and uh, Alan's partner, Anne-Marie, she did the first uh, typesetting, you know, the layouts and stuff. She learned a special program just to do it. Mm. And uh, yeah, that, that, was a, that was so enriching for me to, you know, to be there and to be able to discuss all the things that were happening in Oroville at that oh. time. And, in, and to, to write, to write these articles. And I remember writing about Krishna's farm, you know, when he started Solitude. I was there just the day before yesterday was his birthday. So I was there in the evening, full moon, there's Krishna with his wife and two kids, you know. And I remember him standing there, you know, kind of this kind of wide-eyed, young, very young person. He said, we're going to make a farm here, you know. And you're looking out there and there's nothing but rocks and a few thorns, you know. And you go down there now, I mean, it's a thriving farm, you know, with coconuts and mango full-grown mango trees and all that. I was just thinking about that the other night. 
So, you know, I wrote that, I remember writing that article, you know, and, you know, writing down, he, he was telling me his dreams and all that. And, uh, and there it's there. So, to be part of it in that sense, yes. you, you got such a nice thing to go around and interview people and to go around and check on what was happening and then come back and discuss with this, uh, with this very bright group, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and then we always kidded Alan, because Alan was kind of the main editor, that he... Uh, influenced all the policies in Oroville because he used to write the articles about it. See, who had the collective memory of what was happening in Oroville and what happened through Alan? And so he would write an article, oh. let's say about, uh, you know, governance in Oroville, right? One of these long articles. Well, <clears throat> all the people in those committees and all the people uh, organizing Oroville and you know, the foundation and donors and the whole world would read this. They would read it. Sure. They would read it, and whose view are they getting? They're getting the synthetic mind of Alan, who was putting it all together. So we, we, you know, he was like, I always felt he really, in, and he had such a positive, and very uh, grounded view of things, and very fair. And uh, mm. so all those years, in thirty years, uh, you know, no letters to the editor, hardly ever. Because, uh, you know, he ne they, and they put controversial things out. They put things out about what was happening. But, you know, it, they were truth, and, you know, you couldn't dispute it. And uh, it was very good. Very good, the uh, Orville today. And then the other, of course, News and Notes, we started, uh, there was, uh, you know, who was uh, involved in that is our old friend, uh, Savitra, ah. you know, from the early years, Alan. Lippmann. Yes, Lippmann. Yes. Yeah. So he, he, he was always really into that, uh, publishing those you know, mimeograph sheets, you know. Because first it was called the Notes, I think, just Notes. But we had the Gazette Orvillian, came out of Pondicherry. That was the very first thing, and it was written in French and English. Mm. So some people wrote on that, like Ron Jorgensen. You oh, remember yes. Ron, who was a Tai Chi teacher? Yeah. Uh, he, used to, he wrote some oh. wonderful things about Oroville. And I quoted them, I remember quoting them mm. in my book, The Dawning of Oroville, I put them in my book because they were so well written. He had The, the Landing of Oroville, part one, <laughs> and then part two. He would, they were all in the Gazette. Oh. And uh, so then, uh, then we had our own notes, of course, when he had the heavy times, you know, and all the, you know, that Shurabindo Society era. So the notes got quite, quite intensive. and. And then uh, the French uh, did this Orville Review, because that Orville Review, uh, they wanted something a little more high quality and more of that. And it wasn't just in French, it also had English, French and English, and even some writers like David Wickenden. David Wickenden wrote a lot for Orville oh, Review because yeah. he was a very skillful writer. Good writer. So he wrote a lot of articles for them. And the review is still going, but now it just comes out in French, I think, and and rarely. I mean, it's not like so. Orville today is the journal. Uh, Orville today is really the journal. Uh. It, it really, uh, and you know, and then of course you saw the evolution of the quality of it. Now they have uh, mm. nice paper and color photos, and uh, and you had people contributing uh, all through the years. Some really good photographers, John Mandine uh. and Sven. Sven, uh, you know, they're still doing photos. I think John is still doing mm. photos. Uh, so those guys kind of supplied it. But now, see, everybody has their cell phone and they have good resolution cameras. So now they, uh, you know, the reporter takes their own photos. And Alan and Carl, they just, mm. you know, so we, they're not relying so much on the so-called professional photographers. But the, the quality of it is, is really good. You know, well, we're fortunate we, to have that. When we meet next, I would love if you could bring your book and we could talk a bit about your book. Oh, happy to, happy to. Of Wonderful. course, I will do Wonderful. that. Wonderful. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Awesome.